We have here three cylinders. Two of them are identically marked. And if we align them, and I take this white one, it will roll to the plus. So let's reverse our experiment here. And it still rolls to the plus. This might seem pretty obvious. Let's try it again. Oh, but now it went the other way. And it goes the other way again. And now it doesn't go. So who knows what's going on? The first two times, I bet 90% of you were thinking magnets, right? You had it down, magnets. But really, I've tricked you. There's a small stone in here. I can make it roll whichever way I want. <laughs> now that's fun, but it probably irritates some of you on a little level too, right? See, for most of you in high school and down, you're the first generation in the world that has had instant access to information. You're not really used to things that you can't immediately understand. Also, you're very tech savvy for the same reason. You tend to be multitaskers. That's a nice way of saying that you're um, easily distracted. It's okay, I am too. And uh, you know, most of you actually have very high ambitions. How many of you want to be experts in your field someday? Yeah, quite a lot of you. In fact, uh, statistics tell us about 60% of you. And that's a great ambition. But where do you start? In high school, you get the feeling that what you're starting to do at this point in your life may matter, might actually translate into something for the rest of your life. And so you look at all your options, right? And there's writing, and there's music, and there's sports, and there's all types of science. And, you know, pretty soon you're starting to feel lightheaded <laughs> with all the options. Well, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am now a research physicist at the Air Force Research Laboratories here in New Mexico. But I started out a musician. I got into college on a string bass audition. And what I soon learned was that my passion for music was not being matched by my talent for music. But I recalled that in high school, I had to take a mandatory physics class that had really sparked something in me. That had been interesting in a way I hadn't expected. And I thought, you know what, maybe I can go into physics and pull something from physics into the world of music. And I can enhance it and make a place for myself in music by incorporating science. And so I went into physics, and you know what, the results were sometimes disastrous. Because what happens when you put a musician in a physics lab is they don't understand what's going on. So one time, I had to clean out this vacuum chamber with nitric acid. So I did a little bit of research. I learned that nitric acid cannot come into contact with things that are organic. Well, to a musician, that's things that either are or used to be alive. So don't get it on me, right? That, that was my take-home message. But in this vacuum chamber, there was a little bit of organic residue, because organic actually means contains carbon. So I flushed this out, and I flushed it into a gallon vat of waste nitric acid, and I sealed that up very tight because I was a good student. And I set that down next to four gallons of acetone, a gallon of methanol, and a gallon of propanol. And then thankfully I left the lab. <laughs> because I had just made the biggest bomb that I ever hoped to make in my entire life. I can still, I can still visual, or I can still remember seeing the top of one of those bottles smack the glass on the lab door right in front of my face. There is still glass embedded in the concrete ceiling of that laboratory <laughs> that you can go see today. Well, I, I can't go see it, but you can go see it. <laughs> so, this is what happens sometimes. But what happened is, uh, in my case, I didn't end up bringing it back into music because in physics, there were wonderful opportunities and I started taking them and I took them to heart and they kept coming and I kept grabbing them and I kept following them and pretty soon I replaced a passion for music with a passion for science. Now, that's not the case in other fields. Science has made tremendous contributions 
to many things, economics and sports and music, auto-tuning. If you've ever enjoyed a song by an artist who cannot sing, you can thank somebody with a technical background. And so, as you go along, if you have a basic training in a science, it will allow you to solve problems that will come along because life is full of these types of challenges that are not immediately obvious. And if you want to be the one, the expert in your field, that can solve those challenges and grab those solutions and be able to manipulate them and be able to twist them to solve the problem, you will benefit tremendously from having a background in science, from having some technical expertise and experience and understanding the phenomena that is driving the field that is your passion or dream. And so I urge you, as you begin your career path in high school, consider, consider taking some training in science and empowering yourself for your own future.